Here's a quick problem on distinguishable permutations. I'm going to phrase it as a probability problem. If I randomly shuffle the letters in Kanakanak, which is a settlement in Alaska, apparently, what is the probability that it will appear unchanged? So I'd like to know how many distinguishable permutations. So there's one Kanakanak out of all the different reshufflings over the number of truly distinguishable permutations of that word. And distinguishable meaning, if I switch the two Ks, or if I shuffle any of the A's, or the N, or sorry, there's three Ks, or if I shuffle any of the A's together, then it won't look different. So, what are we going to have? Oh, let's put it back up here. So, con, uh, let me put it all caps. Let's not take and make a distinction between the first letter and the other ones. Kana kanak. Okay. So if these were all different, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I'd have nine factorial different ways of writing that. So this is this is going to be the number of distinguishable permutations. And we're going to take the reciprocal of this in a minute to get the probability that it looks unchanged. So there's going to be nine factorial if they look different. And I like to describe that sometimes as, let's say this is red, green, and blue, and then I color the A's like purple, chartreuse, mauve, and orange, and the two N's I color black and white. Then I really could tell the difference, and then there'd be nine factorial. But I've purposely overcounted. The K's aren't different colors, and so I correct by grouping those all together for any particular... Um, place I put the k's, then there's going to be, I'm going to have overcounted by three factorial different ways of coloring them. Similarly, I've overcounted by a four factorial factor with the a's by artificially ordering them, and a two factorial here. Now, if there were any single letters, they would go in as one factorials, which don't even need to be counted. Okay, But in this case, everything has a partner, at least one partner, and so these numbers actually add up. They always add up to this number up here, but just sometimes I get one one factorial times one factorial. In this case, that doesn't happen to happen. Alrighty. Okay, so let's see, nine factorial. So hmm. let's just get a number. Well, actually, no. Let's uh, let's first look at their probability. Okay. So the probability. This is the number of distinguishable distinguishable permutations. So that's my sample space, and then I was just looking at one particular distinguished element of that the original ordering. And so the probability is 1 over that guy, which just flips it. 3 factorial times 4 factorial times 2 factorial over 9 factorial. And I want to mention something. There's another way of doing this. I purposely counted the sample space without distinguishing, with sort of without any more order than I need to without distinguishing things that I don't really want to distinguish. And then there was just one of the possibility that I treat that, regardless of how I artificially color it, as the one interesting uh, outcome. Now, I could have actually left the colorings in and said, OK, the sample space is all the ways to shuffle these guys and artificially order the Ks and artificially order the As and artificially order the Ns. But then I just have to recognize that there's a lot more outcomes that I count as kana kanak any orderings of the k's, of the a's, and of the n's. So it's equivalent. It's this general principle that if I am sampling things without replacement, like once I use one of these k's, one of them is used up, and I know there's only two left. And once I use one of the a's, there's only three left. I can't just turn it into k, 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 for example. When I'm sampling without replacement, I can choose to leave the order in, as long as I do it consistently on the top and the bottom of a probability calculation. Or I can try to correct for the order right at the start um, and take the order out, and it's going to work either way. Okay, so this is going to be, we could do this with a calculator, but let me just show you. I bet this will simplify pretty well. Okay, so 3 times 2 times 1 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Sorry, scrunching that in a little bit. Okay, so I'm just going to use that to cancel that guy. The 2 and the 3 cancel the 6, and the 2 cancels that down to a 4. So I've got 1 over 9 times 4 times 7 times 5. And 
again, a calculator is fine for the last of this, but sometimes it's it's good practice to try to um, get it relatively simple. So 1 over 30, so let's see, well, 9 times 20, that's 20, 180 times 7, which is 1 over 1260. So pretty darn unlikely to get the same thing when you reshuffle. Okay.